butt joint. So we have a lap and we have a butt. These are further classified depending upon the arrangement. This one is chain type, multiple row type. These are classified based on the straps, single strap, double strap. These are further classified based on chain type or multiple row type. So we want a joint of these two plates having thickness T1 and T2. And the length of this one is more than, this length of rivet is more than T1 plus T2. And this one is diameter of rivet. So I make the hole similar to the size of the diameter of rivet. Then the rivet will insert it this side. Now when the rivet is, uh, rivet is inserted, then I have to push, uh, place here one sort of hammer. And this side is hammered on this side. Then is the contraction of the length will take place? Because of the contraction of this length, the diameter will increase. If the diameter will increase, will it produce additional stress on the plate? So because this additional stress should not be produced, the diameter at this point will be slightly larger than the diameter of rivet. So some clearance is always maintained between the diameter of rivet and the diameter of the hole. So this size is exactly not equal to what diameter of rivet. Because if you make a diameter of rivet and you try to uh, make this shape equal to same as this one, that is a riveting operation. In that case, the length will going to decrease, diameter will increase, that will try to produce the tearing of the plate. To avoid this, the hole in this plate should be made always larger than the diameter of rivet. So the diameter of hole must greater than the diameter of rivet. And in that case, this rivet was inserted inside this one. As this rivet was inserted, you will find some clearances there. So there is some clearance. Now as you start hammering on this side, it will try to, the length will decrease and it will adjust the space. So that is called as the riveted joint. So this will fill up and because of the length, this gap is closed down. And that is why it become the leak proof joint. There is no space left between this now. Now these two plates are unriveted plates without hole. So how much force you can apply to this and how much force you can apply to this that is F2. That is we want to just stretch the plate by applying the force F1 to this one and F2 this one they are made up of same material and sigma is the normal stress. XYT divided by factor of F2. From this we can calculate F1 and F2. If we know the cross section of this one, if I say that the cross section is something like this, that equals to what? Length L. So what is the cross section area? So F1 will be equals to, F1 will be equals to L multiplied by T1, multiplied by sigma. And F2 is equals to L multiplied by T2, multiplied by sigma. Right now, I don't know what is T1 and T2. So either of this, one value will be max and one value will be minimum. So any one can be max or any one can be minimum. Now the design is based on what? Design is always based on minimum value. Because if you select the minimum, then both plate will survive. So which are minimum? Either F1 is minimum or F2 is minimum. So design criteria is maximum force that you can apply externally to this plate is F minimum. So if I say that T1 is less than T2, then is the design is always based on minimum thickness. Minimum force you can apply externally will be equals to, this will be L multiplied by T1 multiplied by sigma. Practice, is this force applied, that is this force is applied, is it less than this value? So in actual practice, this force P, which is applied to this plate, is always less than this value. But if this value is not given, you can calculate this value. Normally, they will not provide you the different value of T1 and T2. Suppose in case, they will provide you T1 and T2, 
your design is always based on minimum thickness. And if they have given the T and T, so you can select any T. Width of both plate must be same. So if you have not provided any external force applied to this one, then you have to need to calculate the external force that equals to phi. And if we have unequal thickness, that is T1 and T2, then you have to obtain first the minimum thickness. So P is equals to T minimum by width by sigma. And if you have equal thickness, then P will be equals to simply T multiplied, multiplied by width multiplied by sigma. Well, fairly well due to TL. Right? Having two holes which was made for rivet. Now holes are made. So this diameter is, is the diameter of rivet or only hole is made. So before insertion, this size will be equals to the diameter of hole. So how much maximum force you can apply to this one is called as the strength in tearing. This depend upon the area normal to this force and the stress of the material. Now if you select the cross section at this point, the section will be rectangle. But, but you select the cross section at this point, is this cross section will be less than this one. Now if you observe the side view only, that is this side view, then you see that section at that point is, we have, I have made two rivets, so one rivet will be like this and one rivet will be like this. So material at this point is only this one. At this point, our section is this. Say that this one is the width B, this one is diameter D, and this one is diameter D. So is this H area will be, this is thickness T, is B minus two times D, multiplied by T. So is this tearing strength will be this area that equal to B, minus 2 times the diameter of rivet multiplied by t multiplied by sigma and this value is less than this value because x for when we have the p we have taken the full area that is this area which is the unriveted plate tearing efficiency is pt divided by p right now i have two holes so this value will be equals to b minus 2d by t divided by weighted plate, unrivited plate is this section and this section has thickness equal to B multiplied by T sigma of plate material. So tearing efficiency in very simple language is given by B minus 2D, T will be cancelled out. And if you have only one hole then this will be equals to B minus D divided by T. This is for single hole or two holes. Number of times what happens is that the width of the plate is very very large and there are number of holes we are making 1, 2, 3, 100 and 100 rivets are going like this. So it is not very difficult to calculate the counter number of holes. Rather than this, they use rather than this, they use the concept of pitch. So what is defined as pitch? Pitch is defined as the successive in two successive points. So this is called as pitch. So number of times we have to do the calculation for pitch. So if this one is a pitch, so this one is a pitch and we are coming across two rivets. So if this of this B, it will be P. What is the width available here? Is this is B and this one is D and this one is D. So how much is this section? This one is P minus 2D. So all this value will be replaced by P. So all this value will be replaced by P. That is always preferred in the riveted. B is normally avoided. Rather than this, the concept of pitch is preferred. Distance between the two consecutive points. Now, right now, I have taken the two rivets, so that is why two will come. If I take one rivet in one pitch, then it is P minus D divided by P. When the different value of hole and diameter of rivet, at this point, you select the diameter of hole for tearing only. So. Suppose we apply the force P to this side and we apply the P to this side. This rivet will be sheared off on this area. It is move on this side, other is pulled on this side. So rivet will try to fail at this section. Is this section is a circular section. 
So initially, we have a rivet like this. After sharing will take place, one part will go to this side and one part retains with this. This area is get sheared. So if we have a single rivet and it is break down into two pieces, that is the case of single shear. Or this area, both area, represents the shear area. Is pi by 4. Now this time, we have inserted, we have hammered. We have inserted a rivet and we have hammered on this side. So the rivet diameter will be, will be the diameter of hole or the diameter of rivet now? The diameter of hole. So this one is pi by 4 diameter of hole square of it. And therefore, the sharing strength can be written as, I will write here n later, which is representing the single shear or double shear, multiplied by pi by 4, multiplied by diameter of hole, square of it, multiplied by tau. This is n equal to 1 and n equal to 2 for single and double shear. So, if we have and all are left and then in that case we have one piece carried away to the right side the middle piece will be carried on the left side and the bottom piece will be carried out on the this side so one rivet is break down into two pieces so this is the case of double shear so this is double shear. so sharing efficiency either we can say fs or we can say ps divided by the external force applied or the unrivetted strength of the joint. So in this case we have a rivet this one and this rivet is pushed on this head somewhere like this and is applied the force on this one. So when it is crushed on this side this rivet will take the shape of this portion after crushing. So in crushing we normally take projected area. So Suppose this thickness is T1, so in general I will call this one equals to what? T minimum, it's equal to what? T minimum, either T1 or T2. So crushing strength is given by FCR equals to area projected applied by the crushing strength. Projected area equals to, is this length will be same as diameter? Diameter multiplied by this one is thickness equals to t minimum multiplied by sigma crushing right now in my figure in one piece how many rivets are crushed two so this is multiplied by capital n so capital n indicates number of rivet if we have a single rivet then n equals to one or the sharing so if we call for sharing it is n multiplied by small n multiplied by pi by 4 multiplied by d square diameter of hole diameter of hole this one is diameter of hole this one is diameter of hole diameter of hole multiplied by tau this one is shear and what is the tearing strength tearing strength will be uh, p pitch minus number of rivet multiplied by diameter multiplied by thickness multiplied by C. what is the tearing strength maximum force we can apply is pitch multiplied by t multiplied by sigma tearing efficiency is tearing strength divided by unrivetted plate resistance then we are sharing is equals to fs divided by p and crushing we have f crushing that is the crushing resistance divided by the strength of unrivetted. Out of these three efficiency, which is the lowest value, is called as efficiency of joint. Or in general, I will call this joint efficiency in a similar language. For all these three terms, the denominator is common. So I will just write here the minimum value of either shear either tear or either crushing so will you generate the same answer the very first thing you have to identify in any numerical whether you are go for lap joint or butt joint 
So this one is double riveted lap joint. It means we have two rows. Is used to for 10 mm thick plate and 20 mm diameter rivets. Pitch length is given. So our calculation is based on pitch. Maximum tensile strength, maximum bearing. Bearing is also called as crushing. Bearing is also called as crushing. And allowable shear stress are given. You want to find out the efficiency of the riveted joint. This one represented double riveted lap joint. This one is lap. And we have pitch. So in this pitch, that is, this is called as pitch. Eh? This one is called as pitch. Circulation is based on this area. That is only the green portion that I shown like this. First is tearing. Tearing will occur either along this plane or either along this plane. So if you consider this plane, then how many rivet will cut? Half here and half here. Pitch is Ft equals to one rivet will cut. So what is the disc thickness? Unriveted minus is it d d by 2 on this side and d by 2 on this side this one is pitch from this portion to this portion is pitch this one is d by 2 this one is d by 2 so this is pitch minus d multiplied by t multiplied by sigma pitch we have given equals to diameter is given as 20 thickness is given as 10 Sigma is given as 180. So this is what the calculation of pitch. This one is unriveted. So tearing will take place at this point. And this section will be equals to P minus D by 2. If the shearing has to take place and this plate has to move from away from the second plate, it means that this rivet should fail, this should fail, as well as this is fail and this one is fail. Number one, is this rivet a fail within single shear? So value of small n equals to 1. Then you have to count how many rivet will fail. Half will fail here, half will, half will fail here, and half will fail here. If the total number of rivet fail equals to 2. That concept holds still good if, if you take pitch from this point to pitch from this point. If you take a pitch from this point to take the pitch from this point, then is this rivet will fail completely and is this rivet fail completely? So how many rivet will fail? Two rivet will fail. So the sharing strength is Fs is n multiplied by small n multiplied by pi by 4 diameter square multiplied by tau. Finally, our answer is 62.83. Now we'll, in crushing shear, you have to take the cross sectional and for crushing, you take projected here. So let's check FCR is equals to number of rivets, number of rivets multiplied by projected area. Projected area is simply given by D multiplied by T multiplied by sigma crush. Come out to be 120. External force is not given, so we'll calculate how much external force we can apply. That will be equal to the strength of unriveted joint. That is P multiplied by T multiplied by sigma. This value is equals to 144, pH is 80, T is 10 and sigma is 180, 144 kN. So maximum force you can apply is 144 and least force you can apply from this 3 is 62.83. So this is the least value. So the efficiency of this joint is apply is 62.83 divided by 144. 